What's up guys, welcome back to part 2 of our Nan expedition, in which we explore one of Thailand's most remote regions. As usual, we turned up a diverse array of incredible snakes. Drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and enjoy the episode. Alright guys, afternoon of the next day, we didn't have too much luck last night, and we kind of call it an early night, so... We're out now again, doing a bit of daytime cruising, my turn in the car, Rupert and Harry are out on the bikes doing laps of the same road. So far, nothing yet, but um, in these high elevation mountainous areas, you have a way better chance at cruising stuff in the daytime than you would in other parts of the country. Also a lot of really potentially rare species and lifers for us up here, so we're going to probably do this till dinner time and then once it gets dark, head right back out. Maybe do a bit of walking tonight. The views up here are just amazing. Watch when we come around this bend, it's gonna look so nice. Have a look at those mountain views. All right, I'm maybe not the best at driving and filming, but I'll get some more in a moment. There we go, guys. Have a look at these views. We are so incredibly high up. Doesn't look nearly as impressive on camera, but trust me, it is like absolutely freezing up here. I'm driving here with a hoodie and I'm still shivering. This is what I hate about Northern Thailand herping, that it's always so insanely cold in all of these places, but gotta do what you gotta do to get the snakes you want, so... Oh great, it's starting to rain as well. That's actually not good for Northern Thai herping. Alright, got a daytime snake! How cool is that? Let me just adjust my camera settings. There we go. Have a look at this little guy. A nice little juvenile, and he's running away. A Hetula prasina, the oriental vine snake. Not quite our target, but always good to see any and every snake. Ooh, look at that defensive flare. Angry little dude. Wow, this one is really pretty actually. Oh, and he's probably gonna bite me anyway. I'm gonna get this thing off the road and keep cruising in order not to waste these prime little patches of sun shining through the clouds. Alright guys, I just pulled the car over and I'm actually gonna walk back down the road a bit because I saw a snake in a place that I couldn't stop. It was dead, but it was bigger than the usual snakes that you kind of see around here, so I'm definitely gonna go back and check it out. Alright, here it is. And it is... Not a clue. <gasps> it has really strong banding on the tail. Could this possibly be Bungara Slowinski? The size is about right. The head is a bit too mashed up. I'm gonna have a closer look at this thing. Alright, so after examining it for quite some time, I've determined that it is actually not a Red River crate like I initially thought possibly it could be, and that is because you can tell from the reminiscence of the bones that the tail ends in a tip, and the Red River crate, similar to the Bandit crate, has a completely stump tail, so if this was a crate, the tail would have ended around here somewhere, rather than going into a shine, tiny sharp point. Additionally, I had a very close look at the scales, and there is no enlarged row of hexagonal dorsal scales, so this is definitely not a crate. But it does have narrow white banding, not only on the tail, but you can also make it out on you can also make it out on parts of the body over there ever so slightly. So my guess is that this is like it on Septentrionalis, the oh, I don't even know. I should really learn common names, but one of the wolf snakes. Anyway, time to go. Alright, so here we've got a Boiga cyanea, or green cat snake in the daytime, and other than having black eyes, as it turns out, another big difference between the normal ones and these northern ones is that they have an insane defensive behavior during the day. Have a look at this. He is literally just opening his mouth, exposing that bright bluish black inside. He's just sitting there like that, staring at me, following every move.
Wow, what a defensive little guy. And have a look at that bright blue-black internals of his mouth. And there you can actually see that rear fang in the back of his mouth. You can see it just under the eye, that little black spiky thing poking out. That is actually one of his rear fangs. How cool is that? Just sitting there, watching me, and if I move, he will move to look towards me. What a cranky little fellow. I think he's best left alone. Alright, well, we're gonna leave him there. And we just cruised another adult oriental vine snake. Oh, there's a car coming. Quickly gonna let it go. For some reason I never like letting people see me handle snakes. Not that these are protected or anything, they're not, but I don't know, I always feel like if random people see you handle snakes, there's always potential for issues. Anyway, where the hell did it just go? Turned for one second and it literally vaporized. Woo! Yes! Just got juvenile Goniosoma ceruleum. This was another big target of ours. Now we already got an adult, but because it was actually so big, it was quite dull. And this one is exactly the size we wanted to find next. And have a look at this. I just stopped my bike, literally here, and he doesn't even have a care in the world. He's just inching along as if he doesn't even care. Car's coming. I'm gonna grab this little dude <laughs> and get him out the way. And he is biting me. Hello, sir. How cute. Anyway, I think the others have actually just gone back to the room. So, I'm gonna bag this little guy for a moment. Ooh, thank you for that, sir. Anyway, I'm gonna bag this little guy and go show the others. All right, dinner has been had, and now it's just starting to get dark. It'll probably be fully dark within about 20 minutes or so. The perfect time in these areas to hit the road for especially the red bamboo rat snake, but a load of other stuff is also active in these twilight hours. All right, just cruised another lifer and target of ours for this trip. This is Plagiopholis. It is a, some call it a cobra mimic. It can spread a narrow hood, but I'm personally not convinced by that. Um, now these guys are really unique. It's a small semi snake, which feeds on earthworms of all things. This is an adult, quite a good size actually. Let's see, oh, there we go, you see? He's, he was spreading a narrow hood there, you can see. Just a bit, it's not very visible on video, but he is definitely flattening his neck. Similar to how cobras do. Very awesome. What a neat little snake. Definitely bringing this back to show the guys. They've got this really pretty venter as well. Anyway, I think there's a car coming. I'm gonna bag this guy up and show more later. All right, Farold has arrived, and literally where we met, there's a snake on the tree, well, on a branch in the ditch, and it is a smaller female Gumprecht pit viper, Tremurosaurus Gumprecti. Although, bigger than that first one we found on the road. Still a pretty small one though. I wonder, 
We can test the theory if they're all as calm as the big one was. Huh. With popes and stuff, it's so weird. Usually when you grab them, they right away turn around and like look at you weirdly and defensively. But this one, same as the last, is literally just the most docile thing in the world. You can literally just pick them up. That's what you should do with every viper you guys see. No, I'm kidding. Don't. <laughs> anyway. Just got a nice little male Pope's Pit Viper by the looks of things. Just sitting right in there, if my camera will focus. Very neat, just on the side of the road here. Gonna leave this one in situ, as we've caught plenty of these before. Very neat though, just on the side of the road. Alright guys, I don't know how well you can hear me, but I was just walking up and down the road, shining in the ditches, and all of a sudden, the biggest amount of rain just came down, and I took shelter in this little shrine with a roof, but have a look at the rain. It's just absolutely pouring, and my camera is a bit wet as well. I just parked the motorbike here, and funnily enough, my phone is out of battery as well, so I have no way of contacting the others, and I've got no idea where they're at. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm just gonna wait this one out. Alright, check this out. Harry just pointed out a tiny dead of Opus Monticola, the mountain pit viper on the road. He's really small, only about, I don't know, a couple inches. Such a shame though, it's another species I was really hoping we'd see, which we still might. All right, just got another new species for the trip. Uh, this is Trimorosaurus guoi, guo's pit viper. Very similar to Trimorosaurus albolabris. Pretty much identical, main difference being that it has those blood red eyes, similar to Pope's Pit Vipers, but you can see the tail is striped rather than banded. This one's tail is so bright. Very interesting. Which way was it going? This way. Alright, let's encourage the young sir. Oh. Off the road. Come on. Yes, yes, right way. Go. Shoo. Ooh, no, don't bite me. Yes. Be gone. Alright, check this out, guys. This is... Uh... Sibinophis collaris. The... something something collared snake? All right, I promise after this trip I'm gonna start learning common names. I'll overlay the common name right there though. Anyway, this is another small snake which is pri primarily diurnal and it is a lifer for me. Really happy to be getting this many lifers this trip. Always feels good, you know, when you're in an area where you've never been and pretty much even the common stuff is always something new. But yeah, these guys are pretty quick during the daytime. And of course, once they're in hand and at night, they're a bit dopey, but really beautiful little snake with that very elegant head shape. These feed, I believe, on... I think I read somewhere that they feed on spiders, but the spider-eating snakes are actually a different genus, Gongolysoma, but maybe these ones eat spiders too. Otherwise, I would assume little skinks and stuff. Anyway, if that's incorrect, I'll overlay the correct thing with text on the screen right now. Yeah, very neat to get get this little dude. Just gonna let him gently cruise on off. And under the leaf he goes. Alright, check this out. This is another one of our 
big targets. This is the big-eyed false cobra, and my camera's not focusing, and this is probably the reddest one I've seen. They are rear-fanged venomous, and not a whole lot is known about their venom, actually, so probably not something you would want to let chew on you for a long time, but seemingly it's not a very bitey species. But I will see if I can get him to... Ooh, I take that back. Wow, look at that hood. You can see why they call it a false cobra, and look at the color on that as well. That is absolutely insane. This is a snake I've seen in books for so long, and I've always wanted to find, but I've never been in any area where you actually have a realistic chance at finding it. But have a look at that. Really neat. Pseudoxenodon macrops. The large-eyed false cobra. And during the daytime, I bet they'd be able to focus on you a lot better and actually hood up way more. At night now, you saw I had to kind of provoke it a little bit to get it to actually hood. But have a look at the color on that. Wow. And some of the, like, red-necked keelbacks and stuff will also spread a hood, but none of them spread a hood nearly as much as this, so... In this case, I guess False Cobra is a really appropriate name, and he doesn't like being touched on the back of the neck, because that's usually when he tries to fling around and bite. And he's actually quite big too, you can see when I fully stretch him out. He is definitely a decent sized snake, um, but I think they can probably get even a bit bigger than this. And look at the ventrals. Um, I don't know if you can see them very well, but he's got very nice blotching on the ventrals towards the front of the body. Are we bait? No, we're not bait. And now, he's actually very friendly. Hello. Zoom in on those eyes, you can see why they're called large-eyed false cobra, because they really have massive eyes. And another interesting fact about these is, you may look at it and be like, oh yeah, it's a colubrid. It's actually not. These are in their own group called Pseudoxenodontidae. So these are actually not colubrids, nor elapids like true cobras are. So a very unique snake in every possible way. And he's actually becoming very docile now. Really cool snake. All right, let's let him go. All right, here is a banded wolf snake, and actually only the second one I've ever seen in my life, like it on Saskiatus. I am actually gonna grab him out for a second. Harold actually found this one. And he's not nearly as bitey as the last one was. He's a bit smaller as well and nowhere near as orange. The last one I saw was really brightly colored. This one is quite dull actually, but more typical of what the species normally looks like. Neat. All right, we are now releasing the Plagiopholis nachalis, or the Assamese mountain snake? Yeah, I think that's what it's called, Assamese mountain snake, or fal Assamese false cobra. Um, all the guys have seen it now, and we've driven back to the exact spot where I found it. I'm just gonna let it cruise back off. Maybe give you guys one last better look at it. Um, and they do this really neat defensive behavior where they actually also spread somewhat of a hood. You can see right there he's flattening out his neck, um, but nowhere near as much as some of the other false cobras or true cobras do. He's got very pretty ventral scales. Those ventrals have such a nice pattern, like they've got the big black blotches, but then it also has like all these microscopic little black freckles, which looks really nice. There you can see he's hooding up a little bit, and they've got a very tiny pointed head. They feed on earthworms, 
which I was always wondering about that because it's a reasonably sized snake and you would think it would need to eat so many earthworms to get a full meal, but out here we've been seeing some absolutely ginormous earthworms, some of which are actually even bigger than this snake. I'll try film with an earthworm at some point, but time to let him cruise back off, come on. Ooh, look at him hood there. You can see they'll hood and arch their neck like that, kind of like a red belly black snake does. They'll like arch the neck towards you. Now he's also exposing that nice pattern between his scales. Ooh, nice hood there. All right, go away. <laughs> he's just hooding now. Come on, you're free. Move off. That was quick. All right guys, check this out. These trip me out thinking it's a snake every single time. But I've mentioned previously in the video that you get some of the absolute most giant earthworms you'll ever see in these forests. And here's one of them. Let me try to get him out. Have a look at the size of this earthworm. And this isn't even a big one. I've seen way bigger ones before. And when they get spooked, they'll literally wriggle around like a snake. But have a look at this. That is literally as thick as my finger. And I've seen ones that were literally twice the size of this, but didn't have my camera handy. What an insanely sized earthworm. Alright guys, just got a decent, actually very decent size Malayan crate cruising in the roadside ditch here. Um, ooh. Over here. Wow, this is actually a really good size one, and the northern ones of the mountains here typically have extremely narrow bands, uh, which this one actually doesn't have. This one is looking surprisingly like the lowland ones, even though we're at quite high elevation here. Also that creamy yellowish tone to the bands on the front half of the body. Another thing which is more typical of the lowland ones. Very interesting. I'm gonna let Harry take over with the camera for a second. Alright, so got Harry behind the camera now, and check out the size of this Malayan crate. It's probably one of the bigger ones I've seen. I'm not gonna say it's the biggest I've seen, because I have seen some quite big ones this year, but he is definitely up there. Very wiry, as they often are. Yeah, let me try and stretch him out so you guys can see the full length of this guy. He is probably about 1.2 meters or so, maybe even a bit more. Uh, got a very nice large head. Maybe you can get a close-up of that. And the large head indicates that it's a quite old one. With snakes in the wild, compared to in captivity, I've observed that, well, I don't know if this is a proven fact, but what I've observed is that large snakes in the wild typically have a much larger head than large snakes in captivity, and I presume that that is because in captivity people will get snakes and they'll feed them a load of food, more than they would naturally find in the wild, and that causes the snakes to grow exceptionally large. I've seen this especially with king cobras, but I would guess it's across the board. Uh, and yeah, the snakes will get exceptionally large, but their head will actually still be quite small if it's a young animal, whereas in Thailand, I've at snake shows seen wild-caught exceptionally large kings, which are not fat or anything, so they haven't been power-fed, but they've just accumulated that size over many years, and you can definitely tell that their heads and stuff are much more bulky at that size, so... I don't know if it's true, just something I've observed, which seems plausible to me. But yeah, this one has a really big head. Not gonna let him crawl on me, because this one... For some reason, I do not trust. But yeah, look at the size of that head. That's probably one of the biggest Candidas heads I've seen. Alright, one kiss goodbye. And we let him go. Alright. Thank you.